You ready? Are you ready? Okay, anytime. Roll them, cut, quiet on the set. Action. Hi everyone, welcome to Studio Sunday. Full disclosure, it's really Studio Saturday. <laughs> it's what? just kind of a, a rainy, gloomy Saturday afternoon, so we thought we'd shoot this now. Yeah, so we're happy you joined us. We've had a very busy week here in the studio. Yes. So let's get started. The really complete Paradise 2 is at the printer. Yes. Yay! Finally. We're not using our usual printer for this book, so we're keeping a very close eye on everything uh, to do with the process. They seem to be very meticulous, which is a good thing. So. I love it that they're 24 hour. Uh, I sent the files at midnight and I saw within an hour they've been downloaded. Cool. Yeah. Let's hope they are uh, that good with the book. No, we've used them before and they're great. So they actually printed um, the Strangers in Paradise Omnibus. Well, that went the well. The soft cover Omnibus. So. <laughs> that went well. Uh, speaking of the really complete Paradise 2, if you miss the Kickstarter, you still have an opportunity to get in on this book. We'll have our pre-order store open on Backer Kit this week, and surveys are scheduled to be sent on May 1st. We've also added a few new add-ons that weren't available on the Kickstarter. Uh, we're working with Graffiti Designs again, and so we're offering the Strangers in Paradise Gallery Edition, the, the Abstract Studio version. Um, at a great price and it includes free shipping in the U.S. and unfortunately, so sorry to our international backers, it will only be shipping to U.S. destinations. It's just too big and heavy to get to you guys uh, internationally safely at a price that is not just dreadful. So, we have to buy it a seat on an airplane? Yes, Okay. just about. <laughs> we also have the Strangers in Paradise Volume 1 promo comic available. Um, this was never offered in stores. It was used as a promo uh, at two library meetings. So take a look at that as well if you need to add that to your collection. And, we're all, and we'll also have uh, a couple of other items you can check out. We've got some pins from the previous Kickstarter and uh, maybe the 2022 sketchbook in softcover. Um, so when you get ready to complete your survey, check out all that new stuff we're offering in the store. Um, uh, regarding the surveys, if you don't complete your survey, we can't ship your rewards and add-ons to you. We don't get your shipping information until your reward, uh, until your survey is complete. So it's super important to turn that in because it just stops in its tracks if you don't complete the survey. There's nothing we can do about it. Okay. So survey, survey, survey. What else is going on? Oh, Terry Moore Live begins Friday. The art sale begins at 10 a.m. Central, and we'll have lots of art never offered before. Pages from the first and last issues of all the series, except Strangers in Paradise, there is no first issue. So it'll just be the last issue. Now, this is a big deal because you have always held on to the first and last issues. I have. After I got rid of all the Strangers in Paradise 1 pages, you said, we're not doing that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so now, and finally, now yeah, finally. And we'll talk more about that during Terry Moore Live. Okay. Um, so, and we will have a lot of sketches available, plus free shipping on all purchases in the U.S. Uh, U.S. destinations. Hmm. So check it out beginning Friday at 10 a.m. Central at abstractstudiocomics.com. We'll post times and platforms where Terry uh, will be live streaming. We'll post those tomorrow. Okay. And Studio Sunday will be live next Sunday at noon central. And who will be there? You will. And? And me! <laughs> oh, no! On yeah. air like co-anchors. That's right. So stop by and say hi. Okay. That'll be fun. Yes. Then Free Comic Book Day will be upon us just in two weeks. Terry will be in Dalton, Georgia at the Battlegrounds Games and Comics. They are planning a big event with Terry, Adam Hughes, and Joe Lindsner as well as several regional artists. So if you're in the area, they would love for you guys to come and meet them. Yes, please. So I think it's gonna be a fun event. I do too. And we've added another fun event. Terry will be doing a store signing at Forbidden Planet at their London Mega Store on Thursday, May 30th from 6 to 7 p.m. One hour. Yeah. They're not expecting a big crowd. No. <laughs> 
I'm going to go in there and have something to drink and leave. <laughs> They're printing a very fun, high quality print of the SIP cast for the event. So check that out as well. It's been a long time since you've been to London, so yes. that should be a lot of fun. We keep flying right over it. We do. And this time we're stopping right there. You can go to the Forbidden Planet website for all the details on that, um, that signing. Unfortunately, we can't bring any books or art to the signing. Getting it into the country is like trying to ship from the U.S. It's almost impossible, so. It's like trying to bring furniture. Yeah. <laughs> Phew, that was a lot. Okay, that's all I have which is plenty. Yes. Do you have anything to add, Mr. Moore? No, I, I'm so impressed with everything you have going on. And uh, my answer was the first thing you said, which is we finished the book and got it off. Yeah. That's what I've been doing. Okay, well, and then let's get on the hot seat. Okay. This is from Todd, our friend. He seems to be the only one sending us questions these days. Uh, I have edited down his question because it was very long and detailed. Okay. And we just don't have time for that, so. His question uh, is regarding AI. As an old school traditional artist, are you concerned about AI? What are your thoughts on it? I don't see anything remotely like it being able, like it being able to capture or copy your style techniques, but I could be wrong, maybe in time. I remember when we went through the original battle of traditional versus digital, pencil and paper versus pen and PC, traditional colors versus digital color, et cetera. To me, this is just more of the same. It doesn't affect me um, if an artist uses it. It doesn't change my work, be it AI, 3D models, or just pictures you find on Google. It's all tools an artist can use. Frankly, I'm just tired of hearing about AI. So just wondered your thoughts, concerns on it. Hmm. Uh, and that's the, that's that the condensed the, version. That was the condensed version. Yeah. Well, everybody has a lot to say about AI. Yeah, they do. Uh, and so you're baiting me here. What is my take? And I'll, I'll try to be very short and to the point. Um, Todd's right in saying, if you've lived long enough, you've seen develop many developments show up in the art world. Uh, I came across a cartoon yesterday about digital versus traditional art. And everybody was afraid that once their art got into the digital realm, they would never have any credit or any pennies ever again, ever in no income. But it works itself out. And I think, you know, the AI may be the same fear right now going in is, you know, all you have to do is type in your art style and to a computer and the computer will replace you for eternity. That's the fear. I, I think that the reason why people like art in the, in the first place is the ingenuity of the human mind. Um, we can, you know, it's, if, you never know what the person's going to do next. We have a really good idea what a computer's gonna do next because we programmed it to do something. Now there are thinking computers that can extrapolate and, and put new recipes and combinations together, but it's never gonna be as ingenious as the human brain. Um, so I think that human ingenuity and creativity is uh, unquantifiable, you know, in, in the computer language. Um, is it true that AI can start making beautiful images of, say, classic cars and robots? Yes. Um, but at the, and at this point, we can. It's easy to criticize AI art in that it all looks alike. It all looks like uh, it's too slick. Uh, but this is our, you know, very early days for AI, and I'm sure that as the programming gets more sophisticated, so will the imagery become more sophisticated and and a lot less crass and glossy. Um, so. We're, you know, in, as artists in the creative world, we focus on what we're seeing in the AI in the creative, how it's impacting us creatively. We forget the fact that AI showed up in really important areas like research and science and, astro and uh, physics. That's where it's really done great work. And it is the future of computing for complicated things. The fact that people are making art images out of it is just um, kind of like a side hobby. It's not really what it was made to do. Yeah. We're playing with a big toy. Um, I'm not that worried about it. Um, if well, some... you have a different perspective than somebody who's just starting out in comics as well. Uh, they have more to worry about because they have a longer history in front of them with it. That's true. And it all also, I was thinking about this as you read Todd's question. 
Todd and I have been through several culture wars, creative mm -hmm. wars. We've had multiple, we've been through several threats to the arts. If you're young, this is your first threat and you're facing 50 years of it. So what happens? I think that, again, I will always bet on the human being over the machine. Well, okay. Yeah. Let's, hope, let's hope you're right. That's my bottom line. Okay. So, Todd, I hope that answers your question in a fairly succinct way. That's as short as I can say it. That was my three hour rant. And, Cut down. and I thought you did very good just staying very level headed about it. So, thank you. I, there was a, we, the first two takes I screamed. <laughs> okay. That's it for me. What are you drawing today? Uh, today, I am going to turn the camera over here and show you all of the art that uh, I had used, pulled out to make the Paradise 2 book. And I, it's time to archive it now and divide it up into sections, archive it, um, all that. And uh, very, it's very fun. And it's so interesting to look at it, uh, what, what things looked like 30 years ago and how I ended up working today. And this is the material that launched my comic book career. So I, I have it on my table. I thought I'd show it to you. <laughs> well, and I see you have your drawer to your little side table here open. You're not going to show everything that's in those drawers, are you? No, they can't see my candy bar collection. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Meet me there. Hey, so the Really Complete Paradise 2 book is finished. Um... I have everything put together and I sent it off last night uh, to the printer. The printer runs around the clock, 24 hours. Um, they've already taken an initial look at it and uh, let me know that they got the files. They're looking pretty good. Um, so I'll see proofs pretty soon. This is for the big cartoon book that was in the Kickstarter uh, that we just ran. And um, Robin is in the middle of putting together the backer kit. I should have just told you that. Um, and she's putting together some really cool things. I'll th back to that in a second. Right now, what I'm doing is, <clears throat> in order to put this book together, um, I pulled out all my old original comic strips, and many of them I rescanned to, to make the book. And they were really just all in like a big mush pile, mush pit, mush pit, <laughs> mushy mush pit. Uh, so what I've done is I've gone through and uh, separated them. Um, that's not in Paradise 2, I don't think. <laughs> you shouldn't even see that one. Um, but yeah, so it's funny, isn't it? How in the old days, comic strips were so big. I mean, look at the size of that. And that's not even the biggest one I drew. Um, and I was thinking about it, and the reason is because back in the 19th and 20th century, <laughs> all they used was cameras. Uh, they didn't have, you know, the digital scanner. So when you're looking at old comic strips, peanuts or whatever, all the way back, um, they're using cameras to, to, you know, get that stuff shot and then make these films, you know, and um, use that to get stuff made and make plates, you know. Anyway, it was a process. It was totally different than the day. So they used really big target areas. So we would have like, this is some of the Francine strips. This was one of the oldest strips that I did uh, back in the day. Look how big that is. Um, and that was standard. I mean, when I was looking at uh, how to draw comic strip books and looking at uh, reading about other working comic strip artists in the newspaper, they were all working big. Um, and then eventually, after a few years of that, I got sick of it. And I just started using a much smaller format like that. Um, yeah, and it was much more practical. This was as I was uh, working my way from comic strips into talking myself into trying to comic book. Um, but I w was going through the strips and I, I pulled all the old Francine, early Francine prototypes together. Um, here's one. This is one of the last strips I did before I started Strangers in Paradise. And finally, the brunette character that I was using, the girl next door in the comic strips, uh, finally started looking like Francine that we met in Strangers in Paradise 1. Um, yeah. So, uh, I'm going to put all this in storage again, but there I've got my Francine strips, I've got these Oliver Wonderby strips, 
Ha ha. The bigger pile is Kachu. Look how big that one is. I mean, some of these are huge. Um, here's a comic strip Kachu. Huh. Very, you know, I was working on the look, <clears throat> the look and the personality at the same time. So I'm getting closer to the look, the, the wild blonde hair, and I was not getting the personality. <clears throat> Here's a good example. Here's one where I could, I was working on the prototype Kachu look, but this brunette, this with the ill temper, she had the personality that I wanted. And when I finally combined this look with the ill tempered uh, girl, um, I, that was the spark that I needed for Kachu. But in the comic strips, it was two different characters. So yeah, that's the kind of stuff I was working out with this stuff. And it's in the book. I explained it in the book how I went from zero to here. So yeah. Um, here's a bag full of just all the little cartoons that I did. I don't know what to do with these. I wish I could just take them to a show and just give them out for free. I don't think anybody wants any of this. Here's the little polar bear. Here is, look at all this. This is a ton of strips, all using this character right here, who was a toad. And I didn't end up doing anything with him, really, because uh, he's a character that um, I drew along with a friend in school. So I felt like it wasn't my totally my character. You know, anything I do is, um, it really belongs to me and my friend. And then there was a third guy who was also drawing the toads very well. So the three of us were drawing that character in high school. And I thought, I, I, I can't go run off and do something with that without taking care of my friends from high school, but there's no way to, to track that. So I drew a bunch of it in the early days of comic strips, trying to figure out what how to draw a comic strip, but I never really did anything with it. Here are the very first comic strips. Wanna see it? This is like one of the very first comic strips I ever drew. And it was anthropomorphic characters because I was coming off of a manga anthropomorphic stage. And there's a Kachu, the very first prototype Kachu, without a T, C-A-K-A-C-H-O-O. -O. And of course, the first thing I did was the obvious pun, is in type. What's your name? Kachu? Kazumtai. What's your name? Kachu? Kazumtai. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. And then in addition to the comic strips, um, I just have tons and tons. Here. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Let me put it all in front of you. Sketches. <laughs> This one is all the Kixie sketches. Everything with, uh, you know, anything where I was working on character designs and fairy designs. Um, yeah, stuff like that. Okay, so all of my Kixie pencils, cold storage. There's, there's an entire movie script. I don't know what I'm doing with that. Um, this is just cartoons number two. And it's just full of all my sketches. I cut out these pages from my sketchbooks. And um, because there's some of the sketch, the sketchbooks, there would be half the sketchbooks I didn't like. Another folder of cartoons. Um, God, you up there? Zeus? Thor? <laughs> Odin? Anybody? <laughs> uh, do you do the... Okay, I gotta show you this one. Every time I put on a t-shirt, I stretch the hell out of it because I can't stand for a t-shirt to hug my ill-shapen body. <laughs> I don't know if you guys do that, but the first thing I do with a t-shirt is destroy it. Don't you dare hug my... Gross body. Um, here's one just to landscapes. Um, just landscapes. 
and apparently pencils. I drew my pencil. So, okay, cold storage. Bat toe, cold storage. Really complete paradise to the pen, the stickers, uh, the polar bear, all of that. Uh, the art for Wonderland, uh, all the original art is right here. It was all drawn in a sketchbook. And then I turned it into the story that appears in the book. This is as close as I'll ever get to uh, like fantasy. Ah, folder full of women's sketches. I mean, I just have so much. I, and I want it all in my brain so I can remember it when I need it. There's a bunch of just superhero um, ideas, little things that I did, my little power girl. And um, there was a time where I was talking with somebody about power girl uh, sketches, prelim sketches for the uh, Batgirl Joker thing that I did uh, with Bill Sienkiewicz, that one issue. More sketches, um, you know, just sketchbook stuff. Kachu jumping on the bed. I think that was probably a prelim for a commission. Um, yeah. Oh, I kind of pulled all the Bick and Beep, the Bick and Beep stuff aside. You know, Bick and Beep uh, inspired uh, Bick and Motor Girl, but they were my super simple character, SSC, super simple character. Uh, this is my stick figure. My, you know, the, the great great comic strip online, The Oatmeal. Look it up, The Oatmeal. It's brilliant comic strip, it's, and it's just stick characters, and it's just so funny. Um, that's where you don't waste your time uh, drawing older drawing stuff. You just do the minimal and the whole thing is about the writing and the moments and the characters and the joke. Yeah, big and deep. And that's where my little space guy came from. Um, this says ever. Oh, okay. These are the prelim sketches for uh, the book I did ever. You know, where I was... Figuring that out. Okay, that's all going into cold storage. Um, okay, let's go over here and I'll show you something. This is a printer proof for uh, the first issue of Echo. And this is really thick paper that the printer sent me as a proof for the book. It's not even stable. So I have two copies of the hardcover uh, Peanuts tribute book uh, where I did a three-page uh, Peanuts strip and I did a remark in there and signed it and that's the Peanuts version of me uh, And there's me and Snoopy My Peanuts me. Okay, 20th anniversary Paradise uh, Strangers Paradise number one 20th anniversary edition reprint and I did a thing in there where they're interacting I did a real remark where she's interacting with the picture. And this one, I did the Francine version of it. Yeah. Um, Runaways, I wrote this story, Umberto Ramos uh, drew it. So I drew the witch character in there. Um, even though there was no room, I did it anyway. We have two copies of the Rachel Rising Black Edition coming. So I did it with a white pencil a white Prismacolor pencil. And the cool thing about this particular edition is it's number four. <laughs> number four, 750 limited edition. Ooh. 2021 sketchbook remark. Um, this is number five of 500. Here's a how to draw. Well, if you're gonna draw a remark in a how to draw book, you better draw well. <laughs> That's intimidating. Uh, so there's the remark. Okay, please understand, I need to put a uh, disclaimer here. This is not how I draw at a convention. If you bring me your book and ask me to draw a remark inside of it, this is not what you're going to get. <laughs> here is a long out print lyrics and poems issue. Um, I don't remember what I did in this. Oh. Kachu singing, open mic night. <laughs> this is number two of 500. A good sketch of, what's her name? One in pearls. 
Ah, a Strangers in Paradise 25 Omnibus. In this story, Kachu is going to, uh, has to go to Moscow, and it's in the wintertime, and the snow is incredible. Uh, uh, Parker Girls. Here's a drawing of Kelly at the bar. And if you don't know why I drew Kelly at the bar, you need to read this book. Uh, cereal. A copy of cereal hardcover. <gasps> that has to be a mistake. Number one. So serial hardcover, limited edition, number one of 650. I'm covering it up there. Yeah. It's just a nice drawing of Kachu profile. This paper is slick and it will not take a pencil. Um, so I use grease pencil to, to do it. A pencil that'll write on anything, uh, glass, anything. Probably the same thing, probably, oh no, it's a Francine. Um, and I stick with the profiles because uh, I, that's the one I can do with, without messing things up too much. You don't want to mess anything up in there because you cannot erase. You might as well be drawing with ink. So, yeah. All right. That's what's going on here. Finishing the Paradise 2 book, uh, putting the art away. Um, and I don't, I'm done with that art. I'm never going to reprint it anywhere again. This Paradise 2 book is it. So I don't know what's going to happen to that art. Um, I don't know. It's just going to go into the archives. Um, I have no idea what's going to happen to it. Um, but I do know that we're offering these books. And uh, the Backer Kid is coming soon. Robin will announce it. And we'll see.